Peace, peace, family. Welcome to another episode of YP Hard Perspective, where we review internet media content via news clips, entertainment, or everyday recordings, and we give you a higher cognitive disposition on the subject matter at hand. Now, today, family, we're going to be doing a YP Hard Perspective in regards to George Zimmerman selling the murder weapon that he used against Trayvon Martin for $250,000 profit. And so with that being said, let's pull up the news clip. Okay, let's pull up the news clip. Here we go. Bam. Now, this was posted by BBC News. Okay, as you can see in the title. All right. May 22nd, 2016. Gun that killed Trayvon Martin makes $250,000 for George Zimmerman. All right. Now, continuing on. Okay, as you read right below this post here. All right. It says if you buy that firearm brand new out of the store, it would normally only cost you about $350. Okay. The handgun that was used to kill the unarmed black teenager Trayvon Martin in 2012 has been sold for $250,000, according to the uh, media in George Zimmerman. Now, I want to read this specific section when you scroll down this article, all right, where the heading is uh, hoax bidders, because there's going to be some disturbing news here, okay, that we're going to be going into in a second. Hoax bidders. The site that hosted the auction, which is unitedgungroup.com, on Saturday confirmed the amount of the Caltech PF9 9mm pistol had fetched according to the AFP news agency the pistol sells new for about $350 the Florida neighborhood watchman had himself told the KTNV station he was accepting the sum Denny, Hun uh, Denny Honeycutt a Florida bar owner who said he had agreed a price of $150,000 told the Daytona Beach News Journal that Mr. Zimmerman that Mr. Zimmerman had reneged on the deal. I thought he was a man of his word, Mr. Honeycutt told the paper. He said the buyer was a woman who wanted the gun as a birthday present for her son. See that? But Mr. Zimmerman said he would not reveal the buyer's identity, adding the winning bidder will ultimately decide if they want their information to be maintained in confidentiality. Now let me jump right into this real quick, okay? Before I even go hard body. So, before there was a $250,000 offer, which was accepted, there was a $150,000 uh, offer by a bar owner. Now, this person, is according, I mean, according to this person, not only did Zimmerman back out and sell the woman, but he, I mean, sell the gun to another woman. He sold the gun to a woman who bought it for her son as a gift. So, before I even go into the aspect of this situation, let me just say something. What kind of person psychologically would want to purchase this weapon used in a homicide as a gift for her son let alone what kind of woman would raise a son who would want a homicide involved in a teenager's life as a gift see we talking about psychopathic behavior here see we talking about psychopaths okay we talking about th these are serial killer traits this is this see people might when i read that Y'all might have looked at that light. I looked at that as, that's like when Leatherface cut your face off and want to wear your face. So my thing is this. Where are the investigations, okay, going into or, or being put behind the mental health status of people like this who exist? Shouldn't there be a mental health evaluation for people who want to buy a firearm that was involved in a homicide of a young black teen? Because I tell you what, I'm pretty sure that firearm wasn't, uh, wasn't broken when they brought it. I'm pretty sure it was able to fire. So if a person wants a firearm that has been involved in the murder of a black teenager or any teenager for that matter, could it be because they have a sick fetish to try to reenact that moment? Okay. Could it be? Could that be? Okay. Because we have to, if you, if, if people go to a football game and they get a signed football from their favorite player, you don't think they're going to go in their backyard and throw it? Okay, is that too far to say? If you go to a baseball game and you catch a baseball from your favorite hitter, you don't think you're going to go home and toss that baseball a little bit? So if you buy a gun from your favorite killer, you don't think that one day you might become tempted to try to use this gun? And so where are the psychiatrists when you need them to say, hey, maybe you're not mentally fit to be purchasing this weapon because you're interested in it is a little creepy, okay? The mother and the son, if that's who he sold it to, because according to him, their identities are confidential. But I don't believe the first buyer 
has any reason to lie, being that he was in the same sick, weird position himself. Now, let's go to the subject matter at hand, okay? You got this guy, George Zimmerman, kills Trayvon Martin in 2012, okay? Now, not only is he acquitted of the charges, okay? He sells the murder weapon for $250,000. Now, there's two ways you could look at this, okay? You could look at this as the way we all want to look at it, virtuously, which is, oh my God, that's immoral. Why would you sell that gun? Why wouldn't you get rid of it? You know, why wouldn't you feel remorse, etc., blah, blah, blah. Or you could look at this the way America looks at it, which is from a business aspect, a capitalistic aspect. See, you can't be mad at George Zimmerman and don't be mad at society. We live in a capitalist society. It's called capitalism. It's about capitalizing off of every situation that you possibly can. That's what this man did. He murdered a, a teenager and then capitalized off the situation by selling the murder weapon. Okay? So George Zimmerman didn't do nothing that retired football or basketball players don't do when they sell vintage jerseys. Okay? He sold the murder weapon. So hopefully this doesn't become a trend of people killing black people and then selling the murder weapon because if you want to actually talk about where this comes from and why this is so sickening okay this even stems back to slavery when they were chopped when they would not even slavery did not they was doing this in the 19 in the 1900s all the way up to the goddamn 80s and they still doing it today on what you call the black market in the dark web they was chopping off black people body parts during lynchings from slavery all the way up as as recent to the 1980s and selling them Okay, as souvenirs. So you can go in a lot of antique ranches and farms and see ears in jars and fingers in jars and penises in jars. And those are those are actual parts of a person's anatomy who was mutilated and castrated during, you know, racist times and contentions in America. And so George Zimmerman didn't do anything other than what racists in this country have done. From the dawn of the time they've been over here being racist towards black people. And so, with that being said, that is why this is so important that people understand. You can't be mad at what George, what George Zimmerman did if you're not mad at the structure of society itself. Everything in society is meant about capitalizing off the next person. If you're hurt, they'll, if you're hurt nobody will come to your aid. But once you're at your breaking point... They'll come do a documentary on you and make all the money off of the pain you went through, but nobody came through your aid to watch the pain, okay? And I want to say this in regards to the situation because it's so important. They want to paint George Zimmerman as a dangerous entity, as they paint many black men. But I'm going to tell you why. See, we talk about racism. They do the same thing with animals. Now, let me give you an example, okay? Because when people say you treat me like an animal, you have no idea how close how closely accurate you are with that statement. Look at a lion, right? What do they do on Animal Planet? They say this is a lion, it's dangerous, it's carnivorous, it's a predator. They call it a predator. Just like Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton called our children predators, okay? Watch the word, watch the word play, watch the word semantics. They call a lion a predator. They call a great white shark a predator, okay? They call it a predator and they magnify the word. Well, technically, everything on the planet is a predator if it consumes okay because fruits and vegetables are alive when you eat certain vegetables they actually kick off pheromones that if you if your if your biological uh composition wasn't so strong it would deter you from eating the food so technically even if you're a vegetarian or a vegan you're still a predator okay if you're a venus fly trap and you eat flies you're a predator okay so nobody looks at spiders and says oh that's a predator because you don't care about the life of a fly okay but a, 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 a lion has the capability to eat you. See, a tree can't eat you, but a lion can. And so what they do is they magnify the natural genetic basis of the lion as dangerous. Oh, it can do this. It can run this fast. It's this strong. Everything that the lion can do that, the, that, that certain people can't do, they magnify it. And then what they do is they kill it unjustly for sport, a.k.a. game, okay? And then the reason you don't feel any compassion for the lion is because you've already already mentally computed the narrative that they gave you of the lion. Oh, they killed the lion. It was dangerous anyway. Oh, they killed the great white shark. It was dangerous anyway. Mind you, you have no idea. I mean, mind you, you ignorant of the fact or not even conceiving the idea that these animals might have been minding their business. How many pictures are there on the Internet of lions and zebras side by side drinking from the same water hole? 
Lions don't just kill mercilessly for no reason. Yeah, they hunt to feed their babies and feed they feed they 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 pride, but that's it. So these are some senseless, savage animals who are bothering people. People are bothering these animals. And then when they murder these animals for fun, you don't have a sense of compassion because you've already computed that this animal was a dangerous predator. Now take that same narrative and apply it to black people. Nobody feels bad when black people get killed, okay? Because you've already been computed in your mind that we're a dangerous predator, predatorial race, and that everything we do warrants the potential harm of someone who's not black. And so the only difference between the lion and the black person is black people actually sell their souls from time to time on TV and, and perpetuate the stereotype their own self. Lions don't do the lions don't make songs about killing other lions and degrading female lions. Black people do that. So the only if the only disadvantage that black people have over the lion is that they reinforce the negative stereotype, which is used to justify their, homo their homicide, I mean, which is used to justify the person who makes them a homicide victim. And so here we go with Trayvon Myron, okay, with the lion narrative. He had a hoodie on. He was walking. It was dangerous. Ku Klux Klan has had, hindr has had hoodies on since the dawn of time, okay? Since they've been the Ku Klux Klan, they've been wearing hoodies, okay? When I first got introduced to the aspect of a person wearing a hoodie, it was me seeing a Ku Klux Klan member on TV. But nobody deems them as hateful. They can come out in public and, and, and have protests and have police protection, which, which would allow them to exercise their freedom of speech. But a young, a young man can't walk home with a, with a beverage and some Skittles with a hoodie on. Is you crazy? Is you crazy? And so the, point of, the whole higher perspective and point of this video is to let y'all know that you need to prepare your children for the world that they live in and stop playing dumb. Because you see the, you see the potential of what happens when you leave your house. And then when it happened, you hurt. But you only hurt because you knew it could happen, but you tried to be imaginary in your mind to act like these things don't exist. You know we live in a, a society based off capitalism. This society is not based off uplifting each other equally, no matter what your race. This society is based off who is going to be my medium to profit off their expense. I mean, pro to profit at their expense. I don't care what their age is, sex is, or gender is. And so Trayvon Myron was a victim of a capitalistic society sprinkled with a little bit of racism on it. But do you think the media honestly cared about Trayvon Myron getting killed? No, because it's their job, okay, to be the first one to air the story. It's their job to be the first ones... First ones at the at the press with the news. So when something bad happens to you, it's something good for them. Look at it like the police. Do you think the police actually want crime to stop? No, because they wouldn't have a job. Do you think the military actually wants world peace? No, because they wouldn't have a job. So the same people advocating against these things are actually there to make sure these things continue. Okay? You think drug dealers actually want people to get off drugs? No, because they wouldn't have a job, okay? You think strippers or, 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 or women who are involved in, in, in using a body want men to actually stop being lustful? No, because niggas wouldn't come to the strip club. And so, here we are in this world. Here we are in this world where a grown man can kill a, a t teenager, whether he's black or any color, and sell the gun. See? Now, let me show you something. If the government actually cared about virtue, if the government actually cared about morality, they would have at least said, listen, even if we can't legally convict you, you're not selling a murder weapon. Because if the government actually was fair, they would say a citizen was involved in the homicide of another citizen. Now, whether, whether you can be found to be involved in criminal activity is one thing. But we're not going to promote violence as something you can profit off of. Therefore, we're not going to allow you to sell this gun or, let, or allow anyone to, uh, to sell any murder weapons because we don't want to encourage our citizens to start getting involved in crimes as a form of profitable business. Because you got people out here who will start committing crimes in ways that they know that they can't be legally convicted gaining mass amounts of media attention, and then selling the murder weapon. But do you think the government actually wants you to not be committing crimes or not be influenced to try to commit crimes? Apparently not. Because if they did, they would have shut that shit down very quick. And so the world, I mean, the point I'm trying to make, family, and I'm going to end this video on this, 
Know the world that we live in. This world is not a happy place. It's not a nice place. It's a very dangerous, disgusting place, particularly this country, which is founded off capitalism. And no matter how good and positive you try to be, it does not matter because there's always somebody preying upon you to capitalize off you. And so with that being said, family, the point of this video is not to incite anger towards George Zimmerman or any government you know, structure or organization. The point of this video is to give you the awareness of the level of sympathy that you believe exists that does not really exist in regards to you being a victim up at the hands of somebody else. And so teach your children not to view the world as the fictional rainbow filled place it is, but the biochemical, okay, uh, chemtrail spray capitalistic society that it really is. And so your children will know what and what not to do when they go out the house, especially if they're black. And I'll give you one last example before I go, okay? Do you think that I know, do you think I don't know that it's not illegal to wear a hoodie? Yes, I know that. But when I go jogging, I wear all, I don't even wear a hoodie. I don't give a damn how cold it is. And if I got the hoodie, if I got a hoodie on, you best believe that shit say Nike on it, huge. It, my, my entire outfit lets you know I'm a jogger, okay? I don't wear hoodies that look like, or if I got a hoodie on, it's going to look, it's going to have so much designs on it, it's going to be, it's going to be as non-threatening as possible. Now, why is it important? I understand that I can do what I want to do, but I understand that I live in a society that creates and perpetuates a narrative that wishes to capitalize me, capitalize off, off me as a black man. So I'm always going to be one step ahead. So when that capitalistic person comes, I'm not what you want because I don't fit the agenda of a victim. You won't have no excuse for fucking with me. And so this is what everybody in the world needs to do. Take your race. Look at the opposite stereotype. Okay, or or a means of capitalism that's being placed upon your race. And teach your children to be one step ahead of that stereotype. Okay? So if they teach you that black men are dangerous. And, and, we, and we are this, that, and the third. Say excuse me when you go in public. Hold the door for somebody. Say yes ma'am. Okay? That don't mean... You know, we kissing nobody ass, but we one step ahead of the stereotype, okay? I'm not going to give you a reason to call the police on me and make me a homicide vet and make me a victim of, of, of a police officer due to, due to negligent homicide. I'm going to be very calm and say, excuse me, and say, uh, you know, good morning. So you won't see me as a threat. It's about teaching your children how to exist in this world so that they can survive, okay? So sometimes, with, sometimes what we have to take into accountability is we're becoming victims, especially our children, of people out here that are actually psychopaths and sociopaths because we're not teaching our children that these people exist. The fly gets caught in the spider web because it's not conscious that it's flying into the web at the time. It doesn't see it coming. Our children is getting murdered out here on every level, whether it be by civilians or government employees, because they're not conscious of the fact that it can happen. And you can't tell a, a child, especially a black child, God made us all equal and, you know, slavery ended and everybody got equality and this, that, and the third. And then they try to go get car insurance and their car insurance is higher because of their zip code. They try to go get a job, but they can't get a job because their name is not, you know, it's considered ghetto. Or, you know, they can't get a job because their hairstyle is considered uh, ghetto. When really it's just the texture of their hair is different genetically. But they're not being accepted. You can't sit here and tell these kids that equality exists when you know it don't exist. So the best thing you can do is prepare these children for the potential of somebody trying to either neglect them, reject them, or capitalize off their downfall. And that will make people not hostile, but make them more intelligent in regards to the decision that they make so that they can avoid the fly trap in the spider web. If Trayvon Martin was my son, I would have never had my son walking home. First of all, my kid's not going to be walking nowhere by their goddamn self. I don't give a fuck how grown or how young they may be because I know what's out here in the world. Because there's so many things that could have happened to Trayvon Martin outside of him getting shot by George Zimmerman. He could have got kidnapped and sold into damn sex, child sex uh, slave trafficking. He could have got murdered and rolled up in a map for his organs like that one kid in the high school. It's so many different things that can happen to a young black man or a grown black man. Okay, y'all act like grown people don't get kidnapped too. So, it's no way my kid gonna be walking anywhere by itself, let alone with a hoodie on. Okay? In a hoodie on. With a hoodie on. That's not happening. Because he's gonna be trained to go. To know the potentials of people's, other people who may have a negative perspective of a black man with a hoodie on. And so with that being said, family, this video wasn't about to talk about 
uh, oh, George Zimmerman made all that money off of a murder weapon. This video right here was to give you a higher perspective of how you could be the next person to put $250,000 in an ignorant, zealot, racist, idiot's uh, bank account off of not being one to two steps ahead of the fact that you're in a capitalistic society and there are predators looking down on you at all seconds and all hours of the day trying to see how they can come up off of your downfall. And when you understand that, you'll move better. And so that being said, family, I hope this video has influenced you not to be upset at the alleged business move that George and Mimi made, but to influence you to not become somebody else's business profit within their wicked agenda. And with that being said, I love y'all. Peace.